Come on, yes. Right. Uh, could you comment on the risks involved in knowing the predispositions to disease? Who may have access to this information, life insurance companies, et cetera? Another great question. So there are risks, and there are risks which have been identified now uh, quite clearly by lots of uh, scholars and experts uh, from the perspective of ethics, uh, law, and theology. If we are all born uh, with glitches in our DNA sequence, uh, this should not be used against us to take away our access to health care or a job. That's almost a civil rights issue, and it's certainly a matter of justice. You didn't get to pick your DNA, and it shouldn't be used against you. And yet at the present time in this country, that can happen. Uh, a number of states have taken action, but there's still no federal legislation to prevent this, despite more than 10 years of effort. Oh, did I do that? That's what's coming next. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the efforts of many of us <laughs> Suddenly, we, uh, the computer has developed. It's trying to hurry me along. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a message here. <laughs> uh, there is a bill that has passed the United States Senate, 98 to nothing, which was a very gratifying day. I sat in the gallery and enjoyed that experience. And uh, I figured, well, that'll do it, because it's a very good bill. Uh, it covers both health insurance and the workplace. And the president announced that day that he would support the bill. If it came to him, he would sign it. Uh, that bill was passed uh, February of 2005. Uh, this is now late July 2006, and the House has yet to take action on that bill. Despite the fact that there are now 227 co-sponsors as of right now, but the way things work, the leadership has to decide uh, to take this up. It's not been assigned uh, to any hearings, and the number of legislative days, as I'm sure uh, Congressman Ehlers would agree, is getting pretty short. And I fear we're headed for, yet again, a really severe disappointment uh, when the public has made it very clear in multiple surveys uh, that they need and hope for this, this protection. But a small number of special interests have managed to keep it out of uh, legislative action in the House. Last question. How are we to relate to those Christians who see the tough issues like young earth creationism or ID as a powerful and true evangelistic method or do we simply not want to confuse them? How do we relate to them? That's a really tough question because I think we have to, in all cases, be loving. And what we must not do is to sort of go after somebody who's putting forward that perspective in a way that doesn't accept their sincere belief and their, their love uh, for Jesus. At the same time, I do think uh, that we can't necessarily just turn and walk away uh, if we all share the same faith and we can see in these instances uh, that this is something which is really out of uh, the truth that God has given us the chance to discover. Uh, I, I think that requires a, a, a gentle, loving conversation. <laughs> and if you can get somebody engaged enough uh, to look at the facts, uh, then perhaps uh, that can, can do some good. I should say there's a wonderful book out there for people who are of that persuasion, who are, I think, looking uh, to try to find out uh, what, what does biology say and willing to read about it. Uh, Daryl Falk uh, wrote a book called Coming to Peace with Science. It's published by InterVarsity. Uh, Daryl is an evangelical, is a biology professor at Point Loma Nazarene, writes beautifully and goes through many of these arguments in, in a very gentle, loving way, uh, but a way that I think could really reach uh, people who are um, open uh, to the possibilities of reading about that. Thank you. Okay.